Yes, I'm Roman, and today we're diving into some Colombian food. Para que tu receta siempre lleve magia, cocina todo con la barrita mágica de gustosita. First stop, zucchini, a vegetarian and vegan restaurant. Let's see if the flavor packs as much punch as their menu suggests. First stop, pico de gallo. I got two options, regular and spicy. Now, I try them solo and then with an empanada because why not mix things up? But I have to say, spicy pico de gallo for the win. 8 out of 10 for the regular and a spicy 9 out of 10 for the heat. As for the empanada, not bad at all. I'm giving it a solid 7. The texture was on point, but let me tell you, when paired with the spicy pico de gallo, it's a whole other experience. That combo, crunchy, flavorful magic, 9 out of 10, chef's kiss. Next up, arepa con queso, and it didn't quite hit the spot. The dough was a bit too soft for my liking. I was hoping for that same crunchy vibe as the empanada. I'll give it a 5 out of 10, maybe next time, arepa. Then came the tamal. I was hyped for this one because it reminded me of blue drawers or dukunu from my home country. But plot twist, it was a completely different experience. This thing was a meal in itself, packed with rice, veggies, and if I ate meat, it would have had that too. But sad to say, it needed more salt. Flavor was lacking, so 5 out of 10, sorry Tamal. And now for the thirst quencher, Lujo. Picture this, a drink so large it could quench the thirst of a small village. <laughs> and it was sour, like... Make your face pucker kind of sour. Apparently, they have sweetened and unsweetened versions, but nobody gave me that heads up. Thanks for that, server. For dessert, we had arroz con leche and bocadilla con queso. The arroz could have been creamier, so 6 out of 10. But the bocadilla, oh, it was a love at first bite. 10 out of 10. Hands down, the star of the day. Next up, Casa Panzotti. Time to keep my protein game strong. I had a salad with salmon, avocado and tomatoes, followed by eggs with avocado and tomatoes, all served with some special local bread and a house cheese sauce. But wait, <laughs> there's more. The drink of the day, limonada de coco. If you've never tried it, you're missing out. It's simply divine. Like, I could drink it forever. Now, we're off to one of Bogota's best, Andres Carnaveres. Let me just say, the ambiance, next level. The decor, stunning. The staff, our server was an absolute gem. Seriously, give them a raise. And bonus points for the coconut slices they brought us. I've never seen that before, but I'm here for it. First order of the night, Lujo. This time, sweetened, thank goodness. 7.4 out of 10. Then, I went for Refajo, a traditional Colombian mix of beer and soda. 6.6 out of 10, an interesting combo, but not my fave. Onto the food. I had the arepa de choclo, and let me tell you one word amazing. Sweet, flavorful, and just perfect. 10 out of 10. And then came the arepa de huevo and padacones con jogao. Both were splendid. No complaints here. 10 out of 10 across the board. We then ended the meal with some treats ovejas and guava con queso, but I don't remember if that's the actual name. And to finish the night, well, we had some more food, but honestly, I'm drawing a blank on the name of the pizza spot. But hey, what I do remember is that we had a salmon pizza with creme fraiche and zucchini. And it was one delicious combo. Who knew salmon on pizza could be such a win? For breakfast the next day, I was back at Casa Panzotti, still keeping up with my protein goals, of course. I had hot chocolate, a protein cereal bowl, and four eggs with avocado, tomatoes, and that irresistible cheese sauce from the day before. Our last dinner for this trip is at El Corral, one of the best burger joints in Bogota. I kept it simple with a vegan burger that promised a whopping 120 grams of protein. Now. I don't know if I believe those numbers, but the taste, spectacular, mouth-watering good. All in all, my verdict on Colombian vegetarian food. I have to specify vegetarian since I didn't have any meat recipes. 
The portions were generous, the flavors were solid, and sharing the meal with good company made it even better. But hey, what about you? What's your favorite Kalamin dish? Let me know in the comments. Hasta luego.